Where am I gonna put that? Andre, <laughs> what have you done? Okay, is there an end to this box? All right, I, I can't find the bottom of this box. This is just a chunk of rock. I don't know where I have space for that, but that's cool. Hey guys, it's Joey, welcome back. This will be the last update of 2020. And a couple different things I wanna do in this one. I got one more uh, coral unboxing. Uh, so we'll do that. Uh, just a little maintenance we could do in this video. I'll show you how I uh, fill up my ETO and how I use the system in the garage to do that. And then we can do a little bit of a look back on the tank uh, all year long. See what changed. Different things like the sand, the lights, all that stuff changed. We'll talk about what is upcoming as well. So I guess the first things we'll talk about maybe what's upcoming for uh, 2021. Uh, so we are actually in the process of moving out of this house within the next uh, eight months. We'll be relocating from Houston to Colorado Springs. So that is a big move for us. It's about 14, 15 hours away and uh, the plan originally was maybe to upgrade the tank, but due to the, the pricing that we're at, uh, it's just more feasible to take the tank. So the goal right now is to try to take everything, basically break this down and set it right back up into the new house. So I'm already planning it in the background here of how I'm gonna be, how I'm gonna possibly do that. Uh, essentially take all the corals, put them in their own containers, then of course the live rock, keep everything cycled. Uh, it will be a whole thing. So stay tuned for that throughout 2021 because that's going to be an ordeal. Uh, it could either go really right and uh, exceed people's expectations. Most people say, don't do that. Just break everything down. But you know, with the success that I've been having this year, it's just uh, too depressing to break things down. So I'd rather try and fail then just sell everything. So that is the goal for uh, 2021. Uh, excited about the new house because I'll have a full walkout basement. So we're gonna be able to still have the peninsula and then we can upgrade in the future. It'll be probably a couple of years before that happens, but I'll have a full filtration room as well. So really, you know, I won't need to do anything uh, super crazy in terms of if I need to upgrade, I could just get a bigger sump things of that nature. Everything will be plumbed through the walls and I'll have the whole filtration room. I've always been envious of everyone, mainly in the Northeast with their basements. They got all their filtration down there and I'm working out of the freaking cabinet here. So I'm excited to finally <laughs> have something uh, that's gonna be easier to work out of. Also uh, in the process of setting up this 40 gallon breeder frag tank. So pretty simple setup here. I uh, just have the overflow box, which I siliconed uh, too low. So the water level is going to be a little low. It's already on there. I could remove it, but I'm not going to. It's just going to be what it is. It's just a frag tank. Uh, one return. They're out of three quarter PVC. So just going to go with uh, flex tubing there. And yeah, this will just hold some frags. Hopefully I can get a little bit extra cash selling some frags uh, before we move to Colorado. So. Uh, we'll see how that goes. As for the coral, everything is doing uh, pretty good. These anemones need to go. At least this guy here, he needs to go. Uh, what else? Uh, I'll, show the, I'll show the new pieces a little bit later on, but they're all doing really well. You have this uh, tour, I believe, here. This guy is a little bit strange. I think it's some kind of milly, but uh, a couple of times it's had random die off. Not sure why. Walt Disney is doing awesome. This one is much better from a, a top down view. Also in person, a much better coloration, but hey, that's, that's what happens when 
you're filming stuff with a cell phone. This is one of the newer ones that I got. Really pale right now, but not worried about it at all. What is this one? The uh, Acid Trip Millie. It's just done like barely anything for the past six months. Just barely encrusting. Um, you know, hopefully that thing takes off. Same thing with the Orange Passion. Orange Passion, you know, it's doing all right, but barely getting off the plug there. Uh, this one here finally started taking off a little bit with all these little uh, new core lights and everything. So hopefully those get more desirable than that centerpiece, which was the original frag, but we'll find out on that one. The stag just continues to do well. A couple frags here. This is the Priscilla Pora. I call it the broccoli. This is one of the frags of a frag that I got. A couple Walt Disney's and some other stuff. There's some coral in there. A little bit of death on this one here with some cyano growing over it. I'm not really worried about that one at all. This stag here continues to do really well. My Fruity Pebbles Monty really taken off. So I'm happy about that. That's really nice to see that one, uh, you know, covering that rock. You know, hopefully in another two, two or three months, it's taken up that whole thing. And I'll probably remove this really dull looking piece next to it. This one's basically done nothing. Cause you know, it's down here at the sand bed. It's not a crazy amount of par there. It should be able to grow, but for whatever reason, this one probably just doesn't do well in that low light. My urgent back here has decided to uh, take these weed zoas that are growing and you know apparently they're not taking over this part of the tank good enough so he's decided to take it upon himself to go ahead and start spreading them around the tank uh, by just taking chunks and uh you know planting them so that's really nice of him what else do we got that's notable here uh frog spawn hammer thing doing good Got Magani doing great. This chalice, not sure what this one's called, but it's doing good. What else? I have to remove this encrusting Monty here. It's getting pretty close to that guy. And then we have, this one's supposed to be the green goblin. That's getting pretty close to the uh, bonsai. So we're gonna have to just keep an eye on that and take that guy's arms off once they get too close. I really wish I could get a better shot of this one for you guys because it has just really awesome purple polyps and it's just a really nice piece. So excited for that one to grow up too. Give you a little bit of the side titty action. So that bird's nest is really taken off as well. I'm just gonna let this thing keep growing. Before, of course, before I frag it off. This one here is really like a deep, deep reddish purple, kind of in the center. And then uh, like a dark blue, dark purple towards the tips. Hard to capture on camera, but this one's kind of one of my favorite pieces as well. New behavior happened after we got back from vacation in November uh, with the Potter Blue, which is over there somewhere, and the uh, Fox Face here. So originally when I put in the Potter Blue, if you remember, this guy was super aggressive. Uh, tides have all of a sudden turned, and now this guy here likes to harass him. So I don't, <laughs> I don't really care. It's kind of like, that's what you get, you freaking bully. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. It is pretty interesting though, uh, cause you know, he'll put up his uh, fins there and that kind of keeps the powder blue from really going too crazy at him. So it is a good defense mechanism. Glass is a little dirty here, so sorry about that. That's one of the new pieces. This is an Ephalo. Waited on that thing to really start branching out more. Another piece that I wish you guys could see a little bit better uh, has really nice uh, purple polyps 
and just really nice looking piece. Here's Princess Peach and also a snail. So not the best shot of Princess Peach, but hopefully in another month or two, we can get some good overhead shots of that piece. Here's the other side of that other one. You can see a little bit of stuff happening there at the tips. A little bit of fluorescence. Frag rack. Master Yoda. These two pieces are getting really close. So they're about to merge. Can't wait to see that one as a more of a mini colony. Not too desirable right now as frags, but you know, that's what happens when you get frags. You know, you have to be aware, especially if you're new, you know, you might panic, say, hey, you know, this frag looks like shit. It's not, it's not even close to what I thought it was, you know, in the picture. It looks nothing like the mother colony. Uh, don't worry about it. You know, you took something that was the, the very tip of a coral and now you're making it into the base. So it's gonna go through a transition period where it's not gonna look too great for a while. It may also not have a lot of polyp extension that can just come with time as it begins to, to grow and branch out. GSP is GSP, it's fine. Uh, solar flare Millie here doesn't really do much. Terrible angle uh, to try to get this one on camera, but uh, always washes it out. PC Rainbow, this is the one I mounted on its side, and it's finally started to, to branch up after uh, probably six, seven months I mounted it on its side. Other side of the Walt Disney here. See a little bit more color on this side. Um, you can't truly appreciate from this lighting here the, uh, the tips and the, the colors within the polyps. Here's the strawberry shortcake. This one is definitely colored up since I got it, so that's exciting to see. Already encrusting down. This one here is actually the same as on the other side over here. Uh, I've had this piece longer and it's actually smaller. So just, I guess maybe this placement is more inducive to growth, I don't know. This one is finally taking off a little bit. Uh, really deep purple at the tips, uh, looks mostly green here. So <laughs> that is what it is. This guy kind of stalled. It's doing really, really good for a while and just kind of stalled out. So maybe he was just taking a little break. Not sure what this one's called here. We're just mostly coloring up and basing out. Got one right behind it too that's starting to finally branch up. So kind of this, this piece over here that comes out to the left, that was the original frag. And then everything on top is new growth. Here's the broccoli. Uh, to me, the frag is actually more desirable than the colony itself. One thing I need to do here in the very near future is actually chop off the entire dead base here and just remount it, but I wanna remount it lower. Right now it's kind of blocking these two and it doesn't need to be up that high. This one is just really kind of stupid in how it grows. It just kills everything underneath. So it's a constant battle with itself to grow taller because it's killing itself underneath. So whatever. Orange Satosa doing good. I'm getting stung by that. And then me on the other side, and then the pink lemonade is doing very well. Starting to get some new branches. This middle piece here is actually the original frag. So kind of the little bit of that, that darker color, that's the original frag. And it's just starting to get branches off that. That actually has not grown. It's actually just based out more than, than the growth of that original frag has been. So that's interesting as well. Then we got this nice Monty cap. And yeah, so oh, maybe one more, maybe one more. This guy here, back from the dead as well. So that is a look at all of the corals here. Uh, once again, I'll put in uh, some other video of the new corals that I just got. They've been in there for about a week. 
a little over a week and they're all doing pretty good. No deaths so far, so that's good. And that's gonna be the last look at the tank uh, for 2020. I probably, as you can see, I probably won't add anything because I don't really have any room. I've maybe a couple spots, but at this point it's not gonna be worth it because uh, I'm gonna have to move it anyway. So at this point, if I'm gonna buy something, it's gonna be something super high end. So I might as well just wait until uh, we're at the new place so we can actually grow there and be stable. But all right, let's go ahead and we'll go out to the garage and I'll show you the uh, water change station and how we're gonna fill up this ATO here. That is a 20 gallon ATO container. Fill it up maybe every two weeks, maybe a little bit longer, a little bit shorter depending on the weather. And then we'll go ahead and jump into some other stuff afterward. All right, so here we are, we're in the garage. Um, getting a couple more stickers, by the way. So shout out to anyone who has uh, sent me a sticker. We've been trading back and forth. Uh, if you want a sticker, let me know on Instagram and we can swap. But anyways, so this is the garage and the water change station. Bunch of stuff I need to get rid of to start decluttering uh, for the move here. But we have the salt water mixing tank down here, which I don't really use. I haven't done a water change in uh, a year, a little over a year now. And then we have the RDI storage on top. In the new place, these will be uh, much more conveniently located in the fish room. And then I'll be able to just directly plumb in uh, this. Instead of that 20 gallon container, I'll be able to use this one as my uh, RODI storage. So it'll be a lot better. And then I'll also run another float valve. It'll be towards maybe this bottom line. So what will happen is when it hits that point, it will kick on the RDI system. And then of course, when it goes up here, it will kick it off and it won't come back on until it comes back down. So that will make life easier. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna operate out of this side. This has a quick connect fitting and I have my hose right back here. This is just some rubber hose. I think I got it off Amazon or something. I probably have the parts down in the description. Uh, otherwise it will be in my water change station uh, tour and setup. So you can go watch that. But all I'm gonna do is just grab that hose and hook it up and then I'll run it inside. So I'm gonna do that off camera because it's gonna be way too hard to film otherwise. Here's the setup. Just clamp to hold that on. And we'll go start the drain. All right, easy enough. We're just gonna go ahead and start this drain. And notice that if you try to go full blast right away, it, it does something weird and doesn't work. So just let it go for a second and then slowly just let it go wide open. And that's it, it's all just gravity fed. I guess if you're going up or you have a super long distance, you could do a pump or something. I mean, I have a pump um, capable of doing it that way, but just gravity fed works for me. And there we go, drain it in. Probably should uh, clean that out eventually. Running the Tunzi 3155, is that what it is? Something like that. Anyways, let me actually talk about this for a second. So this, this piece right here, if you own the, the part, you'll know what this is. It's a bunch of dog hair attached to it. Uh, this is part of the Versa dosing pump and you can see here that it's snapped right off. So this was the intake side. Luckily it wasn't the output, otherwise it would have drained a bunch of calc uh, all over all over in here. So this Versa is probably the most overpriced garbage that you could probably buy on the market right now. Uh, the first one came uh, dead, or not dead out of the box, it was super loud out of the box. It took them about four, five, maybe even six weeks to send me a replacement. And I have it on a super slow speed, super slow. It's doing 
uh, 500 milliliters per day running the Kalkwasser and that's like a 0.2 or some some very <laughs> small number per minute so that small amount of pressure was able to break that brittle piece of plastic so I mean they sent me a replacement so good on them for sending me a replacement and uh, you know sending it for free but it doesn't really give me confidence in this pump so if you're in the market for a pump I would not go this route uh, it doesn't even set up uh, like automatic alerts with the container is getting low so that's kind of useless the Mobius app is really stupid to get into and just all around not a very good product so sucks to suck I guess while that's still filling up I'm also waiting on my new calcium reactor I got the Geo 818 coming so looking forward to setting that up in 2021 as well I mean everything down here is really doing pretty much the same Claire C is doing its job Skimmer's doing fine Swabby's doing fine and the pickle jar is doing fine everyone's fine it's fine all right guys i just got back from andre's house the original creator of moonshine and i bought one coral from him and instead of giving me corals i guess he gave me his hello fresh box so i'm gonna guess there's not just one coral in here i did buy a, a little bit of a bigger colony or what well, looked bigger on pictures at least so we'll, f we'll see how big it is so let's see what we have in here we have way way more <laughs> way more than one colony what the hell what are these ones these ones don't even have any water i guess those ones leaked out one also no water not sure what happened there oh my gosh okay this is just something what the, what the fuck what the fuck is this where am I gonna put that? Andre, <laughs> what have you done? Okay, is there an end to this box? All right, I, I can't find the bottom of this box. This is just a chunk of rock. I don't know where I have space for that, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> have we reached the bottom we have reached the bottom okay well um, I don't know what to say I just bought one coral and I'm so confused. I guess only these, these ones came with the water. I think this is the one that I bought. Uh, I gotta get to work. Oh my gosh. Okay guys, I don't even know where to start with these corals. Normally I just float them and then obviously place them. Uh, these need to get in some water though, so I guess I'm just gonna unbag uh, some of these and drop them in the sump wherever I can and then the big rock just needs to go right in so I guess it's gonna go right here and what the hell I just got one coral all right guys since I wasn't prepared to receive 19 or 20 corals that I did get this is the option I went with I threw everything into the sump so you can see those pieces floating there. One of those is the original. And then everything else is just kind of tossed in here, just wherever I could fit it. And then the large pieces I actually put into, into the tank. 
and we'll just do a quick tour of these corals. So it's a bigger piece that I got just with some lepto on there. This one here, I think the only major piece is the uh, Eflo on there. This one here, I forgot the name of it, uh, but in my opinion, a little bit better than a green slimer. This is a frag of a frag that we'll see on the other side. Then there's another lepto to the left. Not sure what that one is that I just had in the frame there. The big piece that I just sat right there. Uh, don't know what those two are. We're just going to have to wait for these guys to color up because it's too difficult to tell. This one com came completely just almost white, but uh, not dead. It has tons of polyp extension. And just uh, a little over a week later, these are all doing much, much better. And a small piece here. Once again, just not sure what these are. This is a really nice piece. It's gotten more color over the past week. Giant stag here. What else do we have? We have the original piece that I bought, uh, which is right there. It doesn't look impressive at all. I believe this one's a red planet, which is probably my favorite piece uh, out of uh, the ones that I got. And then another giant stag piece. And then that frag of a frag that I showed you on the other side, that's where it came from. And then the very last piece that we have here is the Monty Cap, which I really like this green. We get a lot of fluorescent greens, but having this nice deep green is really enjoyable to have. Okay guys, so here's the tank back in, uh, I think it was November or early December of 2019. As you can see, tank super cloudy, looks really empty, a couple of sticks here and there, and then you have a, a couple of fish. Um, unfortunately, the leopard wrasse and this uh, golden rhomboid is no longer with us. Hopefully we can maybe replace them in the future, but really love those two fish. Uh, Bowser looks absolutely tiny here. And overall, just not really much to <laughs> to really look at in this tank. It was really bad, and you know, moving into 2020, I knew that something had to change with with how I was reefing. So that's when I got into the reef moonshiner. I was reading about this stuff for nearly a year or so. Talked with Andre a couple different times, trying to get some pointers on what I was doing. Uh, that was maybe making me less successful. Uh, we can never really come to a true conclusion. Um, so I just went all in in 2020, really late 2019 in December there, and jumped on the moonshiners. And as you can see, the tank looks like absolute garbage from this end. It looks so bad. <laughs> all right, let's go to the next one. This is just one of the shots of, you know, shortly after I took that uh, shot with all the, the elements there. Uh, this is my digi that you can see barely a little bit of growth in a couple different spots. Well, a little bit of life actually. That's definitely not growth. This was my pink lemonade. I had this one for you know nearly the entire lifespan of the tank now, and it was just doing nothing. Also, just note like I mean, look at the rocks. Like they're just hair algae everywhere. And I mean, in reality, I did nothing to get rid of this. I just left it, let it run its course. I always you know, laugh because the only people that are bothered by this uh, are not me. Everyone else seems more bothered by this and you know, people tend to just panic. Oh yeah, I got so much algae. You know, yeah, it's ugly, but just settle down. Here's my Duncans. Right before I started the method, uh, this portion here actually started to recede. So not sure what was going on there, but nothing good. So just another shot of this one. This is my Satosa. So when I started the method, I threw in a couple tester frags as well. So you have the Satosa. This is an encrusting Monty. Very misleading to mount it like this. That's that green goblin I showed at the beginning of this video. This is the bonsai. Then you have the stag in the back. All these pieces were added. So I could see, you know, how was the method going to actually do? Typically, I would, when I was adding pieces like this, they might last two weeks, they might last a month, uh, but ultimately they would all die in the end. Uh, this one here is actually the PC Rainbow. So what a transformation on that one! Here's the Walt Disney. This one, like the 
uh, pink lemonade has been in the tank almost the entire time and has basically just started looking off like this so it didn't do anything for you know well over a year there's a couple of shots here this was actually the only piece that I've had perish I got this one from battle corals if you go back to my videos and look at that unboxing uh, this one came with just the very tips alive on three branches and ended up encrusting all the way back down to here and then for some reason it just decided to check out not sure why just a couple more shots here of all the testers and then we have the Walt Disney again from this end there's a little bit of color there but not a lot of growth this side was basically dying off and then you have algae growing off of it it's just it's just a disaster all right so in uh, January I found a tank breakdown the 75 gallon tank and you know couldn't pass it up it came with all the equipment the fish livestock everything so this is the stand that I built for it I built this little uh, work tray here you could design this a little bit better if you wanted to or you could have these bars down lower and that was just going to take too much time and I needed to get this thing together quick so I just put them on top and it's really not bad uh, but if you want to make it look super clean you put them of course on the other side this also acts as a way for me to store my 20 gallon uh, auto top off container and that thing was just sitting in the living room for <laughs> quite a while until I got this put together I uh, probably won't end up putting doors on this thing uh, because we're moving so it's just going to end up in the uh, fish room eventually Here's one of the pieces that I got from that tank breakdown. That's that green Priscilla Pora, aka the broccoli. And you can see, didn't have a ton of color. Uh, wasn't doing super great. This is about a month into the moonshine, so really just that first correction at this point. Polyps really retracted, really not happy. Another one of the uh, pink lemonade. Eh, maybe a little bit of a change from the first month maybe a little bit darker but nothing super noticeable I don't know why I included all these ones in this little slideshow uh, some zoas there uh, what's strange about these zoas is they have longer lashes in this picture so in the this part of the tank breakdown uh, but in mine the lashes got much shorter so I'm interested if you know why the lashes will get longer or shorter drop a comment so this is about that month in. You can see a little, little bit of life is coming back to this digi. Slowly but surely. Definitely has more color. And I mean, even just check out the, the water clarity. You know, I don't even know what that's about. All I did was dose and trace elements at this point. I didn't do anything for water clarity or anything up until now. And, you know, it's already looking better. And this has a little bit of growth back here, but once again, this should not be <laughs> branching up like that because it's encrusted. A couple of shots of the tester pieces, still alive, so that was good. And then I went uh, about a, that month in or so, got another couple tester pieces. It's just a milli. We have uh, no idea what this acro is. And then this was the shot of my was it green is a digi is it a green digi whichever one uh where i basically brought it back together i've talked about it in some other videos showed it at the very end of the tank tour in the beginning of this video uh one of these ends either this piece or this piece here that actually fell off i mean you can see this like barely even has any color and you know go back in the video and you'll see you know all the life that this has now this was the guy's tank is a 75 gallon tank so what I did is I drilled three holes on the side because I wanted to go in from the side rather than try to go you know up over the top like you see a lot of sumps uh, this lends the sump to be a little bit quieter so I don't run any filter socks don't need anything to come up over the top so not really an issue for me and then there's holes in the back which I had little plates of glass to cover up those holes this is a drilled reef ready tank Here's the baffles. This has an over under over system. There's my perfect silicone job there. This had an overflow box on it that was super, super difficult to take off. Pain in the ass. 
couple of shots of the bulkheads. Here's the old sump. This is a Trigger Systems Emerald 39. Uh, so I think that in their system means 39 inches long. Uh, you know, it's a nice sump. I've had it up until this point when I got rid of it for, you know, two, a little over two years. So, you know, it worked great for me and it's it's good size sump. Uh, another reason I was getting rid of this is because it actually couldn't hold all of the water uh, from the tank when it drained out. So if the power went out, this would actually go right up to the top and uh, sometimes in the right circumstances, uh, even flood into the tank a little bit. So by putting in the new one, you know, I did lose some room in, in this cabinet, but, you know, <laughs> uh, I gained... I gained a lot more space in the actual sump, uh, which is a little bit more important to me. If I were to do this stand again, I would have put all the cables or the, the wire management on this right-hand side instead of putting them on the very far end of the peninsula. It caused me, you know, to have to hide a lot of stuff by running it up over and then through, and then I have to, you know, nearly triple the length of every single wire that I get. Then this is when everything is set up and installed. At this point, I was also running the Clarity as well. So that's the automated uh, filter sock, if you will. So using a fleece roller. This thing's amazing. I mean, I change it out maybe once a month. In the beginning, you'll change it out a little bit sooner as it's clarifying your water. Uh, but I wouldn't have another tank without, without this on here. I'm not changing filter socks. and. You know, when I did have the filter pads in there, I wasn't changing them super consistently, so a lot of times they would just overflow. So this one here in this shot was actually on this pump, so it was running separately. Uh, right now, how it is, and not too long after this was uh, shot, I put it into the main drain. So this main drain right here, and then we have the secondary, and then the prime or the backup comes over the top. I always get people asking why I put gate valves on all three. Uh, I didn't really know any better at the time. You really only need the one gate valve for the main drain, so you can lock in that full siphon. But you gotta admit, I mean, three looks pretty cool, right? Uh, this is my old skimmer as well, so obviously swap that out. All right, so here's just another uh, full-length shot here as things are kind of settling into the, the new method, the new year. Uh, you can also see I have... The, I think I still have the gyre. You might not be able to see it right here right now, uh, but then I put this J-Bow back there. You know, flow wasn't super great in this tank. Um, I think I had the, another gyre on this other side where we're viewing this from, and that was basically it. Eventually I added in the MP40 with the full intention of getting another, but when I went to the store, he only had the one MP40, so that's what I got. And yeah, there was really nothing coming from this end other than um, other than the returns here and then this cheap little j bow on that side. So definitely needed to, to fix the flow. But as you can see, the tank's doing a little bit better at this point. I believe this is maybe around uh, March or so this picture was taken. You can see that little piece of broccoli over here. Bowser's looking a little bit better. Water clarity is looking a little bit better. And there it goes. <laughs> so even though the water clarity was getting a little bit better, I was still having a lot of issues with water clarity and just nutrients were kind of all over the place. Even though the gobies would throw the sand all over and clean it up, it was pretty white. And, you know, I just decided to get rid of it. Got rid of it all in one shot. People say you should remove it over time. I just went for it all in one shot. At this point, it was a little bit over a year old. Uh, not a super deep sand bed, but I feel like doing it slowly actually causes more harm. I don't know, that's my unscientific method. Here's right after I removed it. Immediately after, I poured in a little bit more beneficial bacteria, even though that's not really going to do anything because it takes a while for that to actually even seed your tank. It's not immediate. You know, we pour bacteria in and it's ready to go. It's ready to start the cycle. It actually needs to go through its process. But also started to bubble scrub, give the fish some more oxygen, then whatever is still in here, you know, get it out of the system, and then that would go into the Clarity. At that same time, that same weekend, I went ahead, and you could see maybe up here at the top, we have 
uh, SB reef bars, and then an eight bulb ATI fixture. So this is the fixture, and it was time to do a modification because with that tank breakdown came uh, two AI uh, Hydra 52s. So plan was to switch to an LED primary and T5 uh, backups rather than the inverse that I was running. So I have the 64 that I ended up putting in the center uh, just because you can't get the 52s really anymore unless you're getting them used. So at this point, uh, those lights are now on the tank. I think I have a, a shot of the lights in a, another one here, but I will just talk about what's in this one, which is the new Rockscape. You can see this nice shiny bleach white uh, rock, and then you can just see everything looks completely different. So I kind of wanted to level everything off. If we look uh, back in a picture like this, you can see there is this slope. Uh, this tank uh, stand is already pretty tall, so to have stuff up this high, which is about three quarters away up the tank, just way too high. It creates really bad viewing angles and just really not desirable at all. So I wanted to level everything out. I really didn't need to add anything. It actually became more open somehow. Uh, so I had to fill in this, this whole space. So this is the only part that I added, which is about a uh, one one foot by one foot section really and then this is about nine or eleven inches high I think in total and then everything else I didn't remove any rock so this piece here and then on the back side where there's some enemy is sitting uh, those are the pieces that really moved and that was basically it so it's super easy to do here's the lights so you can see the 64 in the center 52 is on the side and then this is the uh, older scape here Another shot of the new scape. And you can see we've got the frags uh, from that tank breakdown. And you know, things are, are not doing too bad at this point. Another reason and motivation for me getting this uh, new scape in here is I was getting a frag pack from Andre, so I needed to have more placement for corals. So definitely needed to get that done. And here's a bunch of the corals that I got. So I'll just go through these, you know, super quickly, just so you can take a quick look. You know, you can pause if you want, but uh, these are all the ones that I got. You know, everything came with, you know, pretty good color. Uh, this is the uh, Monty. Uh, this one uh, changed a lot. You got much more green with, you know, still bluish purple tips, but definitely doesn't look like this in my tank. What else do we have here? This is that bigger tort I was talking about. Actually has a little bit better color in my tank. But this is all really subjective and you know I don't know what causes better or worse coloration in a certain tank. Probably you know a combination of different lightings. Um, you know just how you took the picture in general as well. So that really matters a lot. You might get one frag that looks different in your tank than it does in your buddy's tank because maybe you're running different lights, you're taking pictures differently, he takes his with you know, a little bit more white, you take yours with a little bit more blue, gel filter, you know, foam white balance, all those things make a huge difference. Here is six months of the bird's nest. So that's been doing really good. All those corals were received in June. And then this one was taken, I think, in November or early December. There's so many pictures in here. I'm trying to narrow them down so I can tell the story a little bit better, but sometimes I feel like you just gotta gotta see all of these so you can see where everything came from. And you can even see at this point, you know, six months into this method, you know, removing all my sand, everything like that, you know, I still have this algae. So this is, you know, this algae was on the rocks for you know, upwards of seven months in the system. And, you know, I just stuck with it. I just didn't mess with it too much. I think maybe once I went in there with a toothbrush and just see what I can get of like loose stuff, but nothing like super intense. I didn't change really what I was doing too much, uh, you know, other than getting rid of the sand, but I've still feed in the same way, everything like that. Uh, you know, just stick with what you're doing. Sometimes these tanks just need to go through their own cycle and you just don't need to panic about it. It's not a big deal. 
Here is the Walt Disney. Uh, not too long ago, I took this uh, shot sometime in early December. So you can see, really <laughs> came a long way from that. That uh, first shot that I showed has much better coloration and a lot bigger. Here's just a quick transformation picture of you know what it looked like in early January, and then what it looks like. I think this is right now or earlier in the month. So you can see everything is a lot more full. I you know, moved this bird cage, some big changes. So I added in these Octo Pulse uh, pumps, way better flow in the tank now. I also added on the Hydrus Wave engine, which is absolutely amazing. Highly recommend that. And everything just looks a lot more full. So that's the goal, right? Here's another early, you know, in the year shot, you know, June. And then you can see a couple different things here. So you can see the Walt Disney, you know, tiny right here. It's growing up a little bit in this bottom picture. So if you really look and, and compare, you can see the size difference. I know it's at an awkward angle, but that's just what I have. I was just chilling on the couch, decided to take a picture. Here's that end view. I think I showed this one a little bit earlier. No, this wasn't the one. This is the one I took in June. And then you can see how things have kind of filled in. Just a couple of shots, a few more shots left in here. If you're still hanging with me, if you care about this, but uh, here is the Walt Disney. I uh, fragged it. Uh, this is after two months, just the, the growth that it came back. So not too bad. I don't really know. It's hard to say engage, you know, is this good growth? Is this not good growth? Um, you know, it's, Things are going to grow differently in, in people's tanks. Here's one year in the candy canes. I thought this was relatively impressive. You know, I didn't have too many heads to start. You know, color was kind of eh, whatever. And I think they look a lot better now. Plus, they're actually mounted. <laughs> Here's that stag showed at the very beginning. It's just one year comparison here. You can see, you know, kind of bluish purple starting at the tips here. Much better. That Green Goblin, this one was pale for maybe a month or two and then kind of turned itself around. So I feel like this is slow growth for this type of a piece, but it had a little episode, I guess you can call it. Here's the Pink Lemonade, and what a transformation on this one. Like I said earlier in the video, this kind of main body here you know, hasn't really done much if you compare it. You know, it's not too much larger here, didn't really do anything. Um, but all of this has branched out and this is actually a little bit of an older picture just a nice one that I had of this colony not colony, this frag still uh, but all this is actually a little bit higher here's that broccoli so big transformation on this one I fragged this one once I got about 5 or 7 frags out of it and what I need to do with this one is exactly what I said earlier in the video. I need to chop off this bottom and then move it down because it just stacks on top of itself and gets pretty undesirable. So that way you can see these two corals a little bit better. So here you can see that uh, image I had in the very beginning. And you, you know, tank looks like garbage, scape looks like garbage, water looks like garbage. Everything's garbage in this top picture. Uh, this one here was I think maybe a month or two ago, not too long ago. Um, but you know, things are looking better. Sometimes the tank goes through, it's a little bit of a cloudy phase. But then you have this one I took just before recording this. So tank looks you know, way better. Everything is much more filled in. You know, you have better water clarity and things are just much happier. So really happy with, you know, where the tank is at now. Looking forward to to the future here, you know, getting these things, you know, even bigger. Got the frag tank setting that up, so we'll get into that side of the hobby, hopefully just, you know, swapping stuff out. And, you know, we'll see where it goes. And hopefully things stay good up until the point where we have to move. And you know, we'll see what happens at that point once we move. Here's just a couple more transformations I thought were notable. That's a Tosa. This is the size it is now. Here's that uh, Back from the Dead Digi. 
much better now. And the Walt Disney. This picture is a little bit old. Uh, you can tell from the other ones. But, I mean, this little nub <laughs> became this little mini colony. So that's pretty awesome to see. And then nice transformation. I think this is the last one to end on is this Fruity Pebbles Monty. Tiny little piece, not amazing coloration, but here you have it now. Hopefully by uh, you know, mid-2021, it's taken over that whole rock. So, all right, guys, that's the last piece I have for you. That's the last look of everything. That is my reef tank in 2020. The story of how it all happened. You know, I could put it together in other formats maybe in the future, but... You know, looking forward to 2021 and the move to Colorado Springs. Can't wait to have the filtration room and the tank set up there and then uh, see what we can do over there. Uh, drop a comment on how your tank was in 2020 and maybe what you're planning for 2021 with your tank. And I'll catch you in the next one.